I've got two problems up here for you to do. They both involve the same curve. So I've just drawn a picture of the curve here. I'm saying C1 is this portion of the paraboloid y equals x squared between the points negative 2, 4 and positive 2, 4. C2 is this line segment connecting these two points right here. Okay. I've shown the orientation so that together they form this counterclockwise loop. And C is just C1 plus C2. So C is this total curve that forms this loop around this portion, portion of the area contained by that parabola. Okay, then I've given you two different vector fields, and I've told you I want you to use Green's theorem to evaluate these two work integrals. Uh, the first of f around c and the second of g around c. Just so you know, on exams, I could do something like this where I tell you, you got to use Green's theorem to evaluate this. I could also just give you this integral, in which case it would be up to you. You could do it as a line integral. It would be a piecewise smooth, so you'd have to parameterize each piece, and you could go ahead and do that. On one of these, another theorem happens to apply, and you could use that. Um, you can use any legitimate method if I don't specify the method to use. But you should be prepared for me to specify. I want you to do it this way. And very important that you know when you have the option of using something like Green's theorem or Stokes' theorem or Divergence theorem. All of them require that my curve for Green's theorem or Stokes' theorem or my surface for Divergence theorem are the boundary of something. So if you don't have that, you can't use those theorems without somehow modifying to introduce a boundary of some region. Okay, so I'm going to suggest that you pause the video, work out both of these work integrals, and then tune back in and we'll check your work together. Welcome back. Okay, so I'm going to just say D is the enclosed region right here. So if I'm using Green's theorem here, I'm going to be doing the double integral over D of my integrand dA, and I always have to work out what is the integrand again, and it's the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix, oops, partial with respect to x, partial with respect to y, and then I just list the component functions. So it would be xy cubed here and 2x plus y here. <laughs> so I'm going to get the partial with respect to x of 2x plus y, that's going to be 2, minus the partial with respect to y of x y cubed, and that's going to be 3xy squared. <laughs> All right, and then it looks like my region D, I think I'm going to choose to slice it this way, so I can then write that as an iterated integral. So this is going to equal the integral from negative 2 to 2, that's where I have slices, and then for each slice my y value is going from the y value on the parabola, parabola which is x squared, to the y value on the line, which is 4. That's a 4. And then we were integrating 2 minus 3xy squared. And that'll now be dy dx. So that's going to be the integral from negative 2 to 2. Taking an antiderivative with respect to y, I'm going to get 2y minus xy cubed. Notice this would give me a y cubed over 3, which will cancel with that 3. And that's just evaluated between 4 and x squared. And then we still have to do the integration with respect to x. Let's see. I'm going to come over here to keep working. So that's the integral from negative 2 to 2. Oh, plugging in 4, I'm going to get 8 minus 64x. And then that's minus what I get when I plug in x squared. So that's going to be minus 2x squared minus x times x squared cubed would be x to the 6th. So that's a total of x to the 7th. And then we've still got to integrate that with respect to x. Okay. I meant to put that in parentheses, I'm sorry, because I need to subtract this whole thing. So let's see, that's the integral from negative 2 to 2 of 8 minus 64x minus 2x squared minus x, or, sorry, plus x to the 7th, distributing that negative, and we're integrating that with respect to x. All right, 
The integral we have to do here isn't super complicated, but it's a little bit tedious. And I confess, it's kind of obvious, I just edited this video. The reason I did that is because I made a careless mistake the first time I worked this out. So we're going to work it out correctly this time. All right, so we're integrating with respect to x. So we'll get 8x minus 64 x squared over 2 will be 32 x squared plus 2 x cubed over 3 plus x to the 8th over 8. And all of that is evaluated between 2 and negative 2. So we'll get what we get at 2 minus what we get at negative 2. Plugging in 2. 8 times 2 will be 16 minus 2 squared is 4. 32 times 4 is 128. Plus 2 cubed is 8 times 2 is 16 over 3. Plus we've got 2 to the 8th divided by 8. Now 8 is just 2 cubed, so this whole thing will become 2 to the 5th, which is 32 minus what we get at negative 2. So 8 times negative 2 is negative 16. Negative 2 squared is still 4 times a negative 32 is negative 128. Negative 2 cubed is negative 8. So times 2 and divided by 3 is negative 16 thirds. And then negative 2 to the 8th is exactly the same as 2 to the 8th because it's an even power. So again, this simplifies to just positive 2 to the 5th, or plus 32. Okay, let's see, if we distribute this negative, it's going to become a plus 16, plus 128, plus 16 thirds, minus 32. So, what cancels? The minus 128 and the plus 128, those are going to cancel the plus 32 and the minus 32, those are going to cancel. So we're left with 16 plus 16, which is 32, plus 16 thirds plus 16 thirds is 32 thirds. Let's just combine those pieces. That's going to be 96 thirds plus 32 thirds, which is going to be 128 thirds. Okay, so that's what we get for our first integral. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this next one. So the same boundary curve and therefore the same enclosed region, but now I'm looking at a different vector field. Okay, so working with this one, I'm gonna get the double integral over D of my integrand dA, and to remember what that is, I know it's the determinant of partial x, partial y, and then I just write my two component functions, y cubed and 3xy squared. So partial with respect to x of this one is going to be 3y squared, minus partial with respect to y here is 3y squared. I'm integrating 0. I will get 0. <laughs> now, if I were to call this P and this Q, what we just saw is that the partial of Q with respect to X minus the partial of P with respect to Y was equal to 0. Another way of saying that is that the partial of Q with respect to X is equal to the partial of P with respect to Y. What that tells me is that this vector field was conservative. And if you remember, if you have a conservative vector field and you go around any closed piecewise smooth curve, your work integral is going to be zero. But if you're applying Green's theorem, your curve is the boundary of a region, it's got to be closed. So if Green's theorem applies because you're working on the boundary of a region, and your vector field is conservative, you're going to get zero. And it's kind of neat to see how the theory about, hey, if these guys are equal, it's conservative, and the integral around any closed loop is going to be zero, 
sort of works out, works in conjunction with Green's theorem that my integrand is exactly the difference of those two things that will be equal if the vector field is conservative. Nice to see that connection. 